Welcome to the Dawn of War Crucible tutorial. Today we will be looking at Necrons, their strengths and weaknesses, and how to play them. Like with in the other guide, I would like to mention that Dev Mode is a very useful tool for all factions in order to test them out. Put this on, go into a game, and just check out everything that your faction can do. So, uh, Necrons. Their main strengths are their unbeatable late game. If you let Necrons go into super late game, they are nigh unkillable. And their unique economy, specifically the, them not being reliant on listening posts nearly as much as most other factions. They still need a listening post in the early game, but as you get later and later, they become less and less relevant. Their main weaknesses are their vulnerability to rushes and certain timings. They have very serious power spikes, but that also means that right before their power spike, they are very weak and are vulnerable to attacks. And the reliance on one resource makes it difficult to manage and decide what to do between uh, defending and building units and uh, focusing on economy, etc. So, a uh, few things to note when you load into a game as Necrons. First of all, power. You may note, no requisition, just power. Everything's power. Then, instead of requisition, you have this time bonus. So, if I were to build a Scarab and send it out to capture a point, and if I were to put an obelisk on that point, you see it went from 1% to 10%. This is very important to Necrons. This time bonus gives you research time, recruit time, uh, it speeds up the how fast your scarabs can build, it reduces the cost of amplification generators, it does a lot of things. You need to get this as high as possible, especially in the early game. So then, the last unique feature of the Necrons is their resurrection. They have most of their units, when they die, they fall onto the ground and leave their bodies. Specifically, if you look at their heroes, their heroes don't just die and resurrect at your HQ. They resurrect on the spot where they died. So Necron Lord died. Whenever this button becomes available, you see, he resurrects on the spot. And when their units die, so when the Necron Warriors die, for example, they leave bodies on the ground like this, which can then be revived through a multitude of their abilities. So, uh, moving on to the main thing about the Necrons, their economy. They use these four buildings for economy. Amplification generators, plasma generators, thermoplasma generators, and heavy thermoplasma generators. All of these are super important in their own way. So let's start with the amplification generator. These are tiny and they don't provide all that much power, but they are necessary for your early game to get you started as they are cheaper uh, than the plasma generators. And again, the more obelisks you have, the, ch the more discounted they become, so with a lot of obelisks, even when you have like 8 or 9 of them, they will still be cheaper than your first plasma generator, so. <clears throat> so, uh, one thing to note before I go into the individual ones, all of the generators, like all the generators in the game, they have a production speed bonus aura. You see, the circle, that you can activate by clicking this button. So, placing them around your monolith will increase the production speed of the monolith. Since the monolith is, in the early game, your only, and in the late game, your main production building, you need to properly understand how gen uh, modification works. 
So I explained this in another video, but let me go over it again. This aura, the center of the building, needs to be within said aura. Center of the building is here, aura goes out to over here, so this works. If I were to build over here and over here, still has the center, still has the center. But if I were to build, let's say, over here, center is no longer inside, so this doesn't count. So, for early game, the optimal way to place your generators is to place five amplification generators like this, with the center one opposite the monolith, and then two plasma generators at the edges. So one over here, and one over here. You see, these go through the center, so these will work. But if you put uh, amplification generators over here, it won't work. Okay? So this is the main way to build them. And then obviously, if you build a summoning core over here, it gets buffed by all of these, etc, etc. So. so yes, this is how you want to build your generator. So plasma generators, standard generators. These house the power incomes. These are super important. Amplification generators, they house late game researches that buff your units significantly. There is a document on the Discord which explains with exact numbers what these do. And they also have a self-destruct button. So if enemies are in your base, attacking your base, you can use this self-destruct to uh, try to kill them or help you defend. So as for other generators, we have... Thermoplasma generator. Which are built on, obviously, thermal slag deposits. And again, these provide an aura, and they provide a lot of power. So, a single amplification generator provides 5. These provide 10. These provide 30. And the heavy thermoplasma generator is a late-game generator. That provides a lot of power, but it takes a while to build. So let me just get it to show you. Well, it'll take a second to get, so I'll talk about heroes and then come back to it. So let me start building it. Okay, so... Uh, Next really important part of Necrons are all their heroes. Let me also get the Forbidden Archive. So, as mentioned, the main thing with the heroes is that they can be um, revived on the spot. And one thing to note about that is that as you get upgrades for them, the revive cost and the amount of time it takes to revive them increases. So, for example, if I were to get the Chronometron, right? Right now, the Necron Lord costs 200 power. Now he costs 210. And this will increase as you continue getting their upgrades. So, let's start with the Necron Lord. He has, as you can see, uh, let me capture really quick. He has, as you can see, a lot of war gear and a lot of abilities. I won't go through all of them in detail, but I will mention the most important ones, which are uh, Face Shifter is quite important to keep him alive and get him out of a sticky situation. Solar Pulse. You blind enemies in an area. Very useful versus range blobs. So if you're like, oh, I, uh, I, I'm slow Necrons. How am I supposed to deal with, let's say, big blob of Tau Fire Warriors? This is how. You get this. You teleport in. Boom. All squads in this area are blinded. And now your Necrons can get in and kill them. Okay. Okay. And then, I guess, another one, so this is uh, Infiltration, and I guess the other important one is the Resurrection Orb, where it will resurrect units in an area. So, remember, these Necron Warriors died a while ago, so I get close to them, 
and boom. Stay, stand back up. Okay. So yeah, so again, there's more of them, but these are the main ones. So, uh, Cryptek. He has four, and again, as you get these, his cost, resurrection cost, will increase, and the amount of time it takes to resurrect him will increase. So, uh, this is a support ability. This is a support one, which grants you kind of, um, yeah, support things. So, it grants you Seek and Destroy, which increases Sight and Keen Sight, making it so he has a large radius to where he can see uh, and detect units. So, he's naturally in Detector, and this increases that even further. Hunters from Hyperspace makes him move super fast. So very good at getting out of a sticky situation or getting into combat. Strength. This gives him a bunch of stats. And an AoE aura which does damage to enemies around him. Destruction. This gives him a bunch of abilities. So this gives him Solar Pulse, Phase Shifter, Lightning Storm. So again, two Solar Pulses. So you... Uh, hunter for hyperspace to get in and then use solar pulse and again the enemies are blinded you have two of these abilities that you can get not too early but fairly early on like if you commit into heroes this is the way to do it and then conjuration allows them to yeah allows him to see the homeworld portal to get the homeworld portal this is kind of First of all, the building as it comes in, it does knock enemies back. But the main thing is that it works as a pseudo-ancient summoning core where you can get a bunch of stuff from it. Okay. And then it also resurrects allies uh, passively in a small area around him. So let's say I were to kill these guys again. As you can see, they're getting back up. So, uh, Destroy Lord. So, he can possess enemy vehicles. Uh, he has a few abilities. So, again, Resurrection Orb. Uh, Lightning Storm. And main thing is Anti-Graph Powers. So, what this one does is it puts all enemies in an area around him in the air. Unable to attack and move. So again, let's say there's a bunch of enemies that you need to kill. Quite awkward that the enemy is also Necrons. Ah, well. Let me just spawn a bunch of flayed ones. So again, let's say there's a big blob of ranged units that you need to get rid of. You dive your hero in there. As you can see, they're up in the air, they can't do anything, your Necrons can move in closer, and as these guys obviously, you know, stop being in the air, they can then be shot or attacked. And you see they get knocked all over the place. Okay. So those are the three main heroes. There's also the Death Lord, he has some abilities of his own, as well as he can just recruit a bunch of Death Touch Pariahs to his side. So yeah, and last thing for heroes, if you get this research in the Forbidden Archive, the Necron Lord can turn into the Nightbringer, and the Destroyer Lord can turn into the Deceiver now, and they have their own kind of stats and abilities and all of that. Okay, so that's the two main... Oh, back to the heavy thermoplasmic generator. So as you can see, it provides a hundred... Uh, power baseline. Keep in mind this will get increased as these goes up and again a large area around it with, with in which buildings will be <clears throat> increased. Uh, buildings will be increased production speed. Okay. So those are all of the So before I move on to units let's go through the rest of their buildings. First thing to note Relic you use sterilization obelisks to increase your relic. 
you build five of these and each one that you build increases the cost of the next one. So yeah, all of these are just tech buildings. Great Pyramid is your late game superstructure. This is kind of your nuke building per se. Once you get all three uh, add-ons, you it will naturally attack enemies, and again it has a super weapon, and as you can see, it sends out bolts at enemies. Okay. So we have turrets. These are standard turrets. They're there to protect you. Energy beacon. These possess... Uh, so they increase support cap and they also have some add-ons. Which can be useful. So they can shield enemies. They can resurrect. That kind of thing. Tomb wall, this is just a basic defensive structure. I'm not sure what exactly it will do. As I mentioned before in the previous video, we will be reworking all defenses, so I won't comment on it too much. You'll have to read the description to see what it does in the future. Uh, late game turret, Revelation Obelisk went over. Obelisk, obviously, you know, this needs, uh, this goes on your listening posts. Oh, one thing to note about the obelisks, when you get the first upgrade, they get an AOE ability, so keep that in mind. They are, they don't provide you anything, really, but they are better than normal listening posts. Okay. So, uh, and then the four generators. So that's it for the buildings. I went over the heroes, so now I will move on to their units and go through the units tier by tier. So, uh, in the early game, Necrons are some are quite lacking in the units that they can get, and you do need to rely on your hero somewhat. So when you start the game, you can only build the Scarab. Okay. When you get the so, if you build an Obelisk, you will get access to the attack Scarabs. If when you build a Summoning Core, you will get access to the Necron Lord, Necron Warriors, Blade Ones, and Raids. So let's build the Summoning Core. So Necron Lord, Necron Warriors, Blade Ones, and Raids. And when this finishes, Obelisk, and you get access to Attack Scarabs. So this is all you have in Tier 0 in terms of units. So let's go over the basic builder first. A few things to note. Most units, most Necron units have this teleport ability, which allows them to teleport to one of the buildings. This is super useful in terms of mobility, getting your workers out of danger, getting your workers onto the front line to build defenses, etc, etc. Okay, so there we go. Boom, teleport. The other thing that they can do is they can burrow. This makes them infiltrated, but obviously they can't move without unburrowing. This just makes them safe for the time being. And the last thing that the builders can do is this self-destruct protocol, which explodes one of them, but does area to uh, in an air does damage to units in an area around it. One thing to note, they can explode from burrowing. So anyone who plays StarCraft and knows about Baneling mines this is your Baneling Mines, have fun. So next unit is Attack Scarabs. These are, as you can see, free units. And they serve a job similar to Conscripts. So they can burrow as well, just to be sneaky. They have their own uh, jump and reinforcing them does actually cost resources. One other thing to keep in mind is that each squad that you get increases how much time it takes to produce the next squad. So let's say the first squad takes two seconds, the next one will take four, then eight, then 16, etc, etc. So 
this is the limiting factor on how much you can spam them. You can spam a few of them out, but you can't spam any more of that. But obviously, if these squads die, so let's say if the so let's say it's two seconds for the first squad, four for the second, and eight for the third. If the thir if one of the squads were to die, suddenly it's on it's not going to take sixteen, but it's back down to eight. So whilst the squads are alive on the field, the production time is increased. When the squads die, the production time goes back down. Okay. Necron warriors uh, are your core ranged unit. They are the main ranged unit in the kind of infantry part of the Necron roster, and they are viable even later into the game. They have a similar production uh, limitation as the attack scarabs. This is done since they're a ranged unit. Obviously, a big blob of them is very strong, so this is done to limit them and make sure to encourage you to build other units. Okay, uh, so is that yeah, basic ranged unit again? They have the Necron summoning blade once, deep strike, so you can get them out onto the field. Slow, but quite tanky, especially for a tier 0 unit. And again, quite viable with the upgrades later into the game. The main thing with them is when you're fighting on the front lines, you deep strike them in, and they tank, and they disrupt. They Their attacks have a knockback ability, so they're quite useful in disrupting enemy lines. Wraith, this is your early game tier 0 detector and anti-commander. So they have their oh they have their own jump, they can phase shift once you get them into tier 1, they are infiltrated and they are a detector. They have very low health, but <clears throat> and they're quite pricey for what they do, but their main job is to detect and to either disrupt infantry or to deal with commanders. So you can jump them in to deal with ranged infantry, <clears throat> uh, or you can jump them in or walk them in to deal with enemy commanders, since they do a lot of damage to commanders. So that's all of their tier 0. And obviously in tier 0 you can build the basic turret to defend yourself. So moving into tier 1. You first get access to the Immortal and the Cryptech. We went over the Cryptech, so going over the Immortal. This is your basic anti-vehicle. They get an upgraded anti-vehicle weapon later on, but yeah, just anti-vehicle, anti-structure unit. Ghost Arc, this is your transport. First of all, it can harvest bodies, so uh, let me show you if the Necron Warriors die. Give it a second. As you can see, it's starting to harvest the bodies, and when it harvests enough, you can get a new squad. Second thing is they are transports, so you can put units into them. So their use is, obviously, your units are very slow, right? So you get them, and you transport your units around the map, and when any of your units die, you can just plop new ones out. Okay. That's uh, that one. Just freeing up some supply. Okay, so uh, next up is when you get the Great Summoning Core. Obviously, you get access to the second turret. Uh, you get access to Destroyers and two Spiders. So, Destroyers are mobile anti-infantry. As you can see, they're quite fast for Necrons, and they have a jump, and despite being vehicles, they come in a squad of three, so if one of them dies, you can reinforce it on the spot rather than having to rebuild the unit. Quite useful, there is a, quite a core strategy revolving around rushing these guys and just uh, overwhelming your opponent with them. The other unit you get is Tomb Spiders. One thing to note, the first three Tomb Spiders that you get, they will revive on the spot. So obviously, if you get more than three, they will um, spawn new ones. But the first three that you get will revive on the spot. And if they die in the middle of the field, they will revive in that spot. 
Again, they can harvest, as we saw with the Ghost Arc. They have decent, both ranged and melee. And they are fairly tanky. So they have this ranged weapon that you can get, and they have decent melee to begin with. Yeah. So, uh, that is all for tier 1. Going into tier 2, you get access to the Destroyer Lord. You get access to the Death Marks. Death Marks are your snipers. So, first of all, they can mark squad, increasing damage uh, that takes from ranged fire. They can... Hunters from hyperspace, so move super fast. They do uh, a lot of damage to morale. They do a lot of damage to commanders, and they do decent damage versus demons, especially if you when you get their late game upgrade. Also, all of the units have individual upgrades in the summoning core, and there's a few extra ones that you can read what they do. Okay. So, next up, you get access to the Annihilation Barge. Oops, need to get rid of you guys. So, Annihilation Barge is your anti-vehicle, but it also does good damage to swarms. It basically has an AoE attack, so it has good pens versus vehicles, but it can be used to disrupt as well. It's fairly fast, it has a jump, and it does okay damage to Titans. I wouldn't recommend to build it as your main anti-titan but if you're like you know in tier 3 and you're uh, getting like you only get your doomsday arc in tier 4 and you're in tier 3 and you're like oh shit i need some quick anti-titan they'll do okay okie dokie so then the other thing that you get is the heavy destroyers these are uh same as destroyers but they get our versus vehicle uh, anti-vehicle anti-structure and again, you get access to their upgrades in here. So there's a few upgrades in here. You sh would probably read through them. Okay. So yeah. Heavy Destroyer is fairly simple. I probably need to get a second one. So, Tier 3. You don't get access Tier 3 to through here. You get access to Tier 3 by going into the Ancient Summoning Core. This is your secondary production building, where it production reduces things of itself. So you can summon a home world portal from it. You can get the Death Lord. You can get the Mobile Obelisk in Tier 3. Well, actually, let's go through the units that you get in Tier 3 in here first. So uh, you get access to the Restored Monolith. If you ever played base game, this was just something that you... This is what your monolith was turned into. The monolith no longer disappears and turns into this. It just spawns one of these. It can get... A lot of different units, it can teleport, and yeah, it's a restored monolith. So then, in terms of other units... Uh, you get access to pariahs. Death touch pariahs, they poison their victims, so what does that mean? They reduce their movement speed, and they give them a degeneration debuff, so the unit will lose health over time. The Death Strike Polarius, oh, and they have a specific spec. <coughs> Obviously, they're quite good versus infantry, just because more models with low health means the death generation does more. And <clears throat> they are also pretty good versus demons. The Death Strike Pariahs are a generally versatile unit. They heal from damage dealt and they just have good damage versus everything. They are a little bit tankier as the than the Death Touch. So Death Touch Pariahs are more specialized if you're dealing with a lot of infantry and or demons. And the Death Strike Pariahs are generally a versatile unit. So then you get access to the night sight. This is the Necron's fast aircraft. It runs, it flies around, it has a jump, and it is primarily meant to fight vehicles and structures. Okay. Tombstalker. First one revives, other ones spawn. 
uh, similar to the Tomb Spider. This is a, a melee fighting unit. So this... It basically think a really buff Dreadnought. It's fast, it runs into the enemy, it smacks enemies around. If you get it, you know, onto the legs of a Titan, since it's fairly fast, it can just smack the Titan around, even though it's not really meant to be anti-Titan, because the Titan won't be able to smack it back. Just by the virtue of its cost and its tier, it's still pretty good versus Titans. Okay. So, uh, then moving on to this building, Mobile Obelisk. I need to get a Relic Point. So, Mobile Obelisk. This is your artillery unit. It has a long range and an improved weapon, which does a lot of damage to everything. And, yeah. It's your artillery, and with the upgraded weapon, it does good damage to stuff like demons and titans and all of that. So if you need some ranged firepower to deal with late game stuff, this is your choice. Or if you just want an artillery unit. Siege Monolith, this is the first relic unit. Where you can get Necron Warriors from it, and, you know... Um... <clears throat> It has decent range, and it does pretty good damage. It has a teleport, it can spawn Necron Warriors. Yeah. Standard good monolith. Sentry Pylon. This is a kind of turret, quote-unquote, that you can get out on the field. Where you can build Sentry Pylon turrets, but you could also get Sentry Pylons by themselves. As you can see, like the, you can get the turrets. But these guys, you build them and they count as units. And then you can tell... You see, these ones can teleport around. These ones can. They can teleport. They can get an upgrade. So, yeah. So, that's it for Tier 3. Moving into Tier 4, you need to get the Energy Core. Which has upgrades for all your monoliths and stuff like that. And your Tier 5 research. If you're looking for the Tier 5 research, here it is. So, tier 4 units. You get access to the Lich Guard. Again, you can deep strike them. Very useful. They have their own somewhat short range teleport. And they are mainly a tanky supporting unit. They don't do all that much damage, especially for a tier 4 unit. But they are quite tanky. And they provide a lot of support abilities. So, if I go into the summoning core and I get the reassemble research. They get the Mass Resurrection ability, which they can use to resurrect allies. This ability is global between Lich Guard, otherwise it would be way too OP, but as you can see, they can resurrect friendly units. So, in Tier 4, if you want to go infantry, they're your front line. You put a few squads of them in front of your pariahs just to tank for them. Or to support your heroes and stuff like that. Okay. So, uh, you also get access, access to the Doomsday Arc. This bad boy is... let me get rid of you. This is your Tier 4 Anti-Titan. This is your kind of main Anti-Titan that doesn't cost Relic. So, they have a jump. They have fairly short range, but they are quite tanky. And they do ridiculous damage to Titans. Doki, and relatively fast. In tier 4, you get access to the Goss Pylon, basically a really buffed Sentry Pylon that costs Relic. Again, really good at killing Titans and vehicles and structures and all of that. Still good versus Infantry, just by the virtue of the damage that it does, but Titans and structures and vehicles are their specialty. Doomsday Monolith, Deep Striking Monolith, very tanky, has some. Uh, nice abilities. It can solar pulse, it can phase shift to get it out of trouble, it can mass resurrect in a large area around it, it can spawn a siege monolith. So yeah. Just a good all-round late game unit. If you're in tier 4 and you're like, oh, I'm not sure what I want to go for with my relic, get the doomsday monoliths. You can't go wrong with them. Okay. 
So that is it for tier four. Need to get the great pyramid for tier five. So tier five. You don't get access to anything anymore in here, but you do get access to a few units in here. So first of all, when you get this Ionic Energies Research, you get access to the Ionic Orb. This is your squishy kind of mobile nuke center slash anti-Titan, where these abilities do insane damage to Titans, but as you can see by its health, it is very squishy. So it's only kind of defense is its big teleport. And the other the unit that you get access to is Trilith. Big boy. Very big boy. So it has a teleport. Basically near global teleport. It is very, very wide range. Even on big maps, it can teleport like halfway across the map. It can build all of the heroes and a lot of the end game units. It is insanely tanky, does a lot of damage. Its main weakness is melee. If units can get into melee range with it, it can't shoot at them, similar to Titan. So if units, if like strong tier 4, tier 5 melee units get near it, it will go down. So keep that in mind. But other than that, this is the equivalent of the Imperator for you. It's not going to beat an Imperator one-on-one, -on -one, but it's also a lot cheaper. Sorry, it's a lot easier to get than the Imperator, so... And it also has support stuff. It has, it can teleport, it can build units, it can house monoliths inside of it. So you can build, you know, the monoliths inside of it, you can build some obelisks inside of it, and you can deep strike them out, so yeah. And that is it for their units. <clears throat> so, as I mentioned, the, all of these buildings that you would normally build units out of now have a bunch of different researches. I recommend you read through them. Specific note to these late game researches, specifically the heat sink overdrive and the fully operational particle accelerators. This disables all of your gas sentry pylons and gas pylons and all of that. And this enables them again, but now they have much larger range. So yeah, so this is this is what I mean when I say that Necrons are near unbeatable in Uber Late King. Since Sentry Pylons is the only unit you can truly spam infinite amount of, because all of these units cost Popcap, all of these cost either Relic, well, technically you can spam the Trilith infinitely, but, you know, it costs a hell of a lot, so you, you'll have a hard time doing that. But all of these cost either Relic or Supply. The Sentry Pylon is the... and the turret is the only units that you can really spam an infinite amount of. So you get a lot of these, you get these researches, and once this is enabled, they will shoot your enemies from across the map and basically kill them. Or, you know, you can go for the pyramid, and you can get its researches, and you can have it just, uh, you know, win button your enemies to death. So yeah. So that is all of their units and notable researches. So now I will move on to doing the early game build order for Necrons. One thing to note is that there is no standard build order. There's just... Their, their early game is so complicated that there is no standard build order. You just kind of need to adapt to whatever is going on around you. But I will show you how to play their early game well and how, what tools you can use to help you with that. The first thing I would recommend to do when practicing the Necron build order or practicing with Necrons in, the, in general is to just go into a game and either play versus easy AI or enable AI dummies and just try to challenge yourself to see how much you can get done in the first, let's say, five minutes of the game. So let's start this show this as I go. One thing to note, I will slow down the speed of the game by half during this demonstration. 
you can do this yourself. If you check the auto exec file in your Soulstorm folder, it has commands in there. And one of the commands, it sets simrate. Simrate is standard at eight. I will be putting it down to four. And you can use these commands in game to help yourself practice. Obviously, you can't use these in multiplayer and all of that, they're disabled, but you can go into Skirmish and you can use these commands to just practice doing things. And I highly recommend it for Necrons, as there's a lot to do and you're bound to mess up on things, so it's better to go slowly and get everything into your muscle memory properly. So let's get this started. So, uh, speed set to half. Start up a bunch of Scarabs. You most of the time you probably don't want to stop building scar builder scarabs until all of them are built or at the very least you want at least like eight depend on a shorter map but you probably want all of them especially now that they can self-destruct and all of that so first one goes to build three amplification generators as they build super quickly and provide you instantly with a production speed bonus and some extra power. And the same one starts building a summoning core. If you want to build the summoning core earlier for some rushes or to get the Necron Lord out earlier, you can, but this is what I'm going with. So for example, maybe like after your first three Scarabs, you can have one or two more go build the summoning core. And note, all of the Scarabs, as soon as they pop out, I automatically have them start reinforcing. This is super important, as if they don't reinforce, they will <clears throat> lose, you will lose out on production speed and just the general tankiness and all of that. Since the main weakness of Necrons is people getting into their base and killing all of their workers, you want to reinforce these guys. So it's nearly finished building the last amplification generator. Great. So these are finished building obelisks. So obelisk over here, obelisk over here. Will be finished soon as well. I'm simulating this as if I was playing on a big map. Where, for example, in the campaign, you will have a lot of 2v2 maps that you need to, you know, do uh, a lot of, uh, capture a big portion of the map on. So this is why I am doing this the way I am. And capturing a big portion of the map. Okay. So. So this is where you can start building a few squads of attack scarabs when your first obelisks finish. And something to note, when the workers near your base finish building, you don't want to send them out. There's You should have already plenty of other scarabs going onto the map. You want them to help building the stuff in your base. So I take two of these and let's build one more, well, two more amplification generators. One, this one not finished building. That's it. So, great. Periodically check that all of my workers are reinforcing. I didn't miss one. No, I did not. Great. Okay, these two are done with their amplification generator. So again, this setup that I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> three attack scarabs are done. If you want, you can only go for two and then start building a Necron Lord. You probably want to build the Necron Lord anyway. He is a very good early game commander, and the fact that he can resurrect on the spot is very good, especially for bigger maps. And he's fairly quick as far as Necrons go, and he can teleport around. So very useful early game. So this is finished. This guy is finished building his obelisk. So I'm going to teleport him back home to help me build things. So he's going to help with here. Mm. 
<clears throat> and one thing to note about the obelisks is, as I, as I mentioned, their fortification, you don't want to get it immediately on all of them, but it is very good fortification. And something that you can do is you can keep a few builders close to the front line, or, you know, you can just walk them back home to then be able to teleport them onto the front line. So that when you get attacked, you can teleport them to Biobelisk and then quickly get this, get them repairing, and you should be able to defend, especially if you have the resource to build a Goss turret on it. So all of these guys are finished. So, ooh, look at that. The <clears throat> amplification generators are super cheap now. So we'll build two here and two here. Have one of these squads build the second one. You don't want too many squads building the same building as it has diminishing returns. So probably rule of thumb two squads is more than enough. So at this point you can choose to save up to go tier 1 if you want to let's say destroy a rush. But I'm gonna show a greedy strategy where you capture as much of the map as possible specifically so that you can um, choose to not <clears throat> yeah. choose to uh, not go for a rush. This is more so a general versatile strategy rather than specifically trying to rush. So these two go here. These two, I'll move them for a second. It's also a bit annoying with the scarabs because they'll get in the way of you building new things. But it's something you'll just need to play around. So these are finished. So boom. This one is finished. And again, if let's say, you know, a few, like a unit or two come calling, you can just quickly get this. Teleport, you know, you should have spare workers at home now. So get two squads of workers. Teleport them to front line. Have one of the squads start building maybe a Goss turret. Have uh, two of them, you know, start repairing. Maybe press this button if you need to. And a combination of the AoE, the general damage of the fortified obelisk, the self-destruct, as well as the Goss turret should be able to defend most of what factions can do at like three minutes into the game. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All of these are done. So as you can see, I've maxed out on amplification generators. So I'm going to build a fourth plasma generator. And then I will start... Oh yeah, I forgot to send the Necron Lord out. Obviously, Necron Lord needs to be out way earlier. Like, just forgot about him. Yeah, as you can see, this finishes in like relatively 20 seconds or so. So especially if you have a worker further up, like buried into the ground, right? If you have them like here, oh, didn't work. So if you have them like here buried for scouting purposes, you can see the attack coming earlier, or you can send one of your scarabs into the enemy base just to scout what they're doing. So if you know they're going to attack you, you can just get this earlier, and then you have this AoE, you have a few guys to defend and repair, and everything should be fine. And this is why map control is super important, because if I only captured, let's say, these three, I would have no vision over here, and if the enemy were to attack me, I would only know when they're right on top of my base. But because I have a good portion of map control and I have units everywhere, this also does double duty, in preventing me from getting snuck up on. Like, if they start to attack me, I can be like, oh, okay, let's say I just started for tier 1, and I see a giant attack wave that I'm not going to be able to defend here. I can be like, okay, well, let me self-destruct these guys to, like, kill a bunch of enemies, maybe retreat the other squad back, and then start building fortifications over here. If I know that the enemy is going for a rush, and let's say I cancel the tier 1, I get some Necron Warriors, maybe I upgrade my hero a few levels, and I get some turrets, and that's how I defend. This is why map control is important as Necrons, since it allows you to be more, to be greedier whilst being more aggressive. It's an interesting dynamic. So I'm gonna speed up now. 
since it's not as crucial to be completely on point anymore. And let's build the other. Let's spend two of these squads building that. And let's get two of these guys building the... Actually, let's get this first. So get the power income. So again, if you're going for a rush, you will want to skimp on some of the economy, not build the plasma generator, not get this upgrade. But keep in mind, if you rush, there's a chance that, you know, you will obviously not be able to successfully rush and you will be behind. So that's the other thing. That's the difficulty with Necrons. That's the thing I was talking about earlier where, you know... You need to be careful with how you manage your economy. So again, you have access to the Cryptek. You can get him. If you get him to level 3, he gets a good, his first good upgrades. Maybe level 4 or 5, but that costs a lot. So you can go for like a hero strategy with Necrons, but it's not nearly as overpowered as it was before. It's still viable, but all of their abilities don't reset upon death. So you can't spam their abilities. And the increased cost does make it costly to constantly revive them. That was a lot of alliteration. So I go for this and at six minutes I can start building some destroyers. Let's say we get three squads of destroyers. Sure, three squads sounds good. And you get this. And again, you can get all of this done earlier this is a strategy, this is a timing that doesn't sacrifice your economy. You still have a good economy. 132 power income is pretty good at this point into the game. If you don't want to go for the destroyer rush, you can build a second Necron monolith and build more amp gens, more plasma generators, more everything. Uh, but if you want to pressure your opponent, you do this. You get three squads of these, you get their research, you send them at the enemy. If your Necron Lord is alive and near the front lines, you can get some hero upgrades for him to get him his war gear and to get him his good upgrades. And you go and pressure the opponent this way. Again, these guys are fast. They don't die if one of the squad if one of the guys in the squad dies, so you can reinforce them. You can jump them back or forward to micro them. Same with the Necron Lord. Again, you get level 3, you get all of this, you get all of this, and you have a pretty good army to pressure your opponent with. Specifically, you get Solar Pulse so that you can stop the enemy from shooting you, specifically their anti-vehicle from shooting you. You can get some of these upgrades to make it tankier and more fighty. Obviously, Chromonometron is good at slowing enemies and all of that. So yeah, and that is that is the build order. If you want to continue more economy, again, more monoliths, you go tier 2, you get the summoning core, you go tier 4, you start building this because it is quite useful. And yeah, rule of thumb. Yeah, rule of thumb, if you're ever floating uh, resources as Necrons, if let's say you were fighting with this and you come back and it's like, oh crap, I have... Let's say 1,500 resources. What the hell do I do with it? Well, obviously you can build more units. You can tech up. But the other option is just build more monoliths. The beauty of this early build order is you should have a lot of workers around the map left over. Even if like one or two squads die. So you can build two monoliths at the same time. You can do that. You can just go like boom. And then teleport all of these guys I don't know let's say you want to build it in a different spot boom you're building two monoliths and when they finish you can get more plasma generators and you can just boost your economy from there and this is where necrons really get going like when you get up to three monoliths and you start getting more monoliths and you start getting so much income that you can just get these generators like over and over and over it's where Necrons really start to shine and where you really start to feel their economy coming into its own. So yeah, so that was the Necron guide. That's basically it. Another early game build that you can do is in tier 1, you get access to two warrior upgrades, I think. Yes. Do you get all three? You do get all three. So you get access to three Necron warrior upgrades. In tier 1, 
which is really strong. You get access to, uh, you get on life. You get death march. And you get the overcharge. I'm pretty sure that works on Necron Warriors. Let me check. Yeah, obviously get death march again if you want to. Yeah, they get gas overcharge. And you get a bunch of Necron Warriors and you slow walk your way to the opponent. Obviously, you will need some Immortals for anti-vehicle. You will want your heroes to disrupt the enemy lines. So you'll probably want the Cryptek level. Uh, what level does she get her destruction abilities at? Yeah, so level 3 you get your destruction abilities. So you get your Solar Pulse. Very, very good. So you walk the Cryptek with your armies, your Solar Pulse the enemy. Again, you can phase shift. You can still use your abilities while phase shifted. So that's the main use for it. Because if you just try to walk the Cryptek in, he'll get killed. So you phase shift first, then you Solar Pulse... And there you go, all of units in here can't attack, so your Necron Warriors can get closer and actually shoot. And you get a bunch of Necron Warriors, and you rush them that way. So those are kind of the two Tier 1 builds. You can do the Necron Warrior build in Tier 0, but it's a lot harder since you don't have the Death March to make them faster. You can't really afford to get the Hero upgrade since it is a big upfront investment. It's just quite difficult. So you can definitely do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Tier 1, it's much better, especially since they get all three of their upgrades, making them quite strong. Quite difficult to take down. So yeah, that's the Necron Guide. Thank you for watching or listening. Hope this was informative and helped all of you struggling with Necrons. They are a difficult faction to play. Specifically in the campaign versus AI, I recommend going for the Destroyer Rush unless you're fighting something like Sisters, which do have a lot of good anti-vehicle. It can still work versus Sisters if you use your hero properly, but it's not as easy. So versus Sisters, I would recommend the Warrior Rush since they don't really build enough uh, Redemptionists to you know, kill your warriors from afar. And again, you can Solar Pulse in and all of that. So yeah, so those are kind of the two builds that are most useful, especially in PvE, but they will still work in PvP. And hopefully this was informative and I will see you guys in the next one.